We recognize a horizontal expansion as happening when the graph stretches in the horizontal or x direction. A horizontal compression, on the other hand, has the graph being squished in the horizontal direction. In equation form, we'll recognize the horizontal expansion or compression by noting the multiplier beside the x, and we'll call that b. Whether it's a horizontal expansion or a horizontal compression simply depends on the number being multiplied, or the value of b. If b is greater than 1, then we recognize it as a horizontal compression. If b is between 0 and 1, we recognize it as a horizontal expansion. Now, let's stop and recognize that this may seem a bit inconsistent with the vertical compression or expansion, with our multiplier a. Given that, if we were to put a out with the y, in the same way that the b is right beside the x, we see that in fact, they're quite comparable. That is, we look at the reciprocal to identify our multiplier. If b is greater than 1, then our reciprocal, or our, our multiplier, is less than 1. And we have a horizontal compression. If our b is between 0 and 1, then the reciprocal, or the multiplier, is now greater than 1. And we have a horizontal expansion. And we'll note that similarly, a negative b indicates that we have similar expansions and compressions, but with a horizontal reflection involved as well. Example 1. Write the equation of the function shown in this graph. And we start by recognizing that this is a quadratic function or degree 2. And we also see it's reflected vertically. So we can easily put a negative right out front here. Now, is it reflected horizontally? Well, horizontally reflecting a quadratic with no horizontal shift, that is, its vertex is on the y-axis, would have no impact. It would just land exactly on top of itself with no resulting change. If we look at this equation, and we put a negative in with the x, well, we'd square the negative x, and we'd have a positive x squared anyway. Thus, this also agrees with the idea that a horizontal reflection in this case would have no impact. So we'll skip over that. So are we done? Well, things look pretty good, except for this graph seems wider than our standard quadratic. So let's see if this is true. Now, a standard quadratic with a vertical reflection would cross through 1, negative 1. And our graph doesn't pass through this point 1, negative 1. Instead, it passes through 2, negative 1, here. So yeah, our graph is definitely wider than that base. To describe this horizontal expansion, we'll recognize that the multiplier is 2. The x value was multiplied by 2. So the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. And that's our coefficient in with the x here. The equation describing this graph would therefore be y equals negative, and then in brackets, 1 half x all squared. Now we need those brackets to show that the 1 half is impacted by the squared, along with the x. It's truly in with the x, which is needed to indicate a horizontal expansion. So let's confirm. When x is 0, y is still 0. When x is 2, y is negative 1. When x is negative 2, y is negative 1. And it all fits well. Example 2. Write the equation of the function shown in this graph. And we start by recognizing that this is an absolute function. We see a vertical reflection, so we'll slip a negative out front here. And again, a horizontal reflection would be irrelevant in this case. If we reflect it around the y-axis, it would land on itself exactly. That is no change. And also, if we plugged in a negative in with the x into the absolute signs, it would come out positive anyway. Again, no change. 
So the horizontal reflection for this is irrelevant and we're skipping that. What about translations? Well, the vertex is on the origin, so no translations. So are we done? Well, things look pretty good, except for this graph definitely seems narrower than our base absolute. So let's see if this is true. Now, we see that our graph passes through 1, negative 3. Now, our reflected base absolute would cross through 3, negative 3. So our graph is definitely skinnier than the base absolute. And we could say that it is compressed horizontally, or compressed in the horizontal direction. To describe this horizontal compression, we note that our multiplier was, well, one third. Multiplying three by one third gives us our new x value of one. The reciprocal of one third is three. So we know that we can add a three to our equation as a coefficient in with our x. And it has to be within the absolute signs, right in with the x. So the equation describing this graph would be y equals negative the absolute of 3x. So we're done with this question, but let's stop here and point something important out. If you look back at your vertical compression and expansion explanations, you'll note that we did this exact same question. In our case, we described the exact same graph using a vertical expansion. And this equation was our result from back there. Now, this may surprise you, or you may have noticed along the way that a vertical expansion and a horizontal compression both cause the graphs to become skinnier. In the same way, a vertical compression or a horizontal expansion both cause the graphs to become wider. Thus, it stands to reason that we can describe some graphs in both ways. In this case, we can make sense of this algebraically, in that we can easily pull out a positive 3 out of our absolute signs without impacting this equation, which tells us that our conclusion is perfectly valid in this example.